copious notes. Uh, we always say in our trades, note takers are money makers, okay? You want to take copious notes because this gentleman that I'm going to bring up is also a serial entrepreneur, okay? This guy's one of the sharpest people I've ever seen. He's a mentor to a lot of people. This guy's got a great heart for helping a lot of people, okay? And you guys are in for a treat. So with that said, let's get on your feet, even the cool people, let's get on your feet and welcome him up with a big round of applause, Mr. Jorge Contreras. Give it up for JC one more time. Make some noise. You guys don't know how much of a treat it is. They fly this gentleman around the world and pay him thousands and thousands of dollars to speak to groups just like you. And he's here giving from his heart. So give it up one more time for JC. Yes, yes. Awesome. While we set this up, you know, give it up for Ms. Padilla for setting this up. Make some noise. Give it up for Ms. Padilla. Are you guys excited? Are you having fun? Yeah. Do me a favor, everybody stand up real quick. Stand up. High five four people around you. High five four people around you. Give them high fives. Now while you're standing up, I'm going to give you one more opportunity to take advantage of these million dollar chairs in the front. We got some chairs right here in the middle. Okay? I'm going to sign you up. I'm going to sign you up. There's about 10 chairs right here in this middle area. A couple right here. Anybody from the back, this is your chance. Come up and go forward. The thing is, most of you are not standing up and taking one of these front chairs because you care too much what other people think about you. Do you know where you're gonna be in five years if you continue to care too much about what people think about you? You're gonna be in the same place, okay? Everybody here is a senior. Yes? No. How many juniors? Make some noise. Seniors, make some noise. All right. Who knows exactly what they're going to do as soon as they graduate high school? Raise your hand. Can you stand up, sir? Yeah, stand up. What is your name? I'm sorry? Daniel. Give it up for Daniel. Make some noise. So Daniel, what are you, you going to do when you graduate high school? What's your game plan for the next three to five years? Okay, so community college, and uh, what community college are you going to attend? Okay, so check it out. Now, very, very important. Give it up for Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. You can sit down. Now, I want everyone to repeat this. Change your words. Let's try it again, try it again. Change your words, repeat after me. Change your words, change your world. Notice in his vocabulary, he used the word, the word probably. What does that tell you? Uncertainty, not sure, maybe. I want you to start looking at your life. Have you ever seen somebody that was kind of pregnant? You have? I've never met or heard anybody say, I'm kind of pregnant. You're either pregnant or you're not pregnant. It's black and white, there's no gray area. So Daniel, my advice to you is to make it the last time that you use the word probably, okay? Now let me ask you a question, Daniel. What could you have done in order for that probably to be certainty? To know, oh, I'm going to this college because I already know. What could you have done? I'm sorry? <laughs> okay, so now use the word probably. But before getting here today, what could you have done in these last couple months to know what community college you're going to attend? You could have researched, maybe, you know, pre-registered, do whatever it is. But point is, many of us don't, we think we know what we're going to do, right? Daniel said, I know where I'm gonna go. And then he said, probably. So that tells me, again, like JC said earlier, he said, how you do anything is how you do everything. So if you're uncertain about one thing, you're probably uncertain about a lot of things in your life. And that's okay. That's why the three of us are here today, to help you learn how to create certainty. So be, choose your words wisely. I stopped, even before, so one of my businesses, I have a real estate investment business that I own. Before I ever purchased my first investment property, 
I would go to networking events for real estate investors, surround myself with successful millionaire individuals, and I would introduce myself as a real estate investor. Keep in mind, I was not a real estate investor. But I started to create some accountability with my words, with my emotions, with the universe. And as I kept calling it into existence, sure enough, it became. Today, how many houses do you guys think I own? Four hundred. No, I'm just kidding. But that's my goal. My goal is to to own four hundred doors by the time I'm thirty-five. I got five years left. Right now, I own seven. Okay. Yeah. Hey, seven's pretty good. If you own seven houses by the time you're thirty, hey. Now, the way it started. Are we ready? All right. Cool. Now, before I get started, just as I mentioned about your words. You gotta choose your words wisely. Not only that, you gotta pay attention to how you communicate. 80% of communication is body language. And many of you have been sitting down slouching. Todo jorobado like this. Now, what are you communicating to the speakers, to the people around you, but most importantly to yourself when you're slouching, not paying attention on your phone? Not taking notes. Most of you, I guarantee you, were not taking notes while you were on your phone. Maybe a few of you, but not all of you. So sit up straight, sit up straight, sir. Thank you very much. Sit up straight, sir in the red hat, sit up straight. There you go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and begin here. Am I good? Actually, I'm gonna go on this side. Give it up one more time for Ms. Padilla, make some noise. We also got Mr. Martinez in the house, make some noise. That'll do. At any given time, you are either growing or dying. Now what I just said earlier right now about some of you slouching, not paying attention, not being conscious, are you growing or are you dying? You're dying. Because just like I said earlier, you're either pregnant or you're not pregnant. So you're either growing or you're dying. And some of us have the mindset that we're in the middle and there's no such thing in real life. So if you're slouching and not paying attention, guess what? You're beginning to die already. There's a very popular quote by Mr. Benjamin Franklin. He said, most people die at 25, but are not buried until they're 75. Don't let that be you. My life's mission and why I'm here today, very simple, to help you grow. Somebody did it for me and I'm here giving back now. Now before I get started, I'm going to talk about some of my challenges growing up. That's me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I was broke and I was broken. This is me. I believe that was like freshman year in high school or sophomore, something like that. Now, I want everybody to read what it says. You are looking at a mirror. Can you see on three? Ready? One, two, three. And what I mean is a lot of the same struggles that you're going through, many of us experienced ourselves. Now, we're at a different place at our, in our lives, but the lesson is the in-between, the creep feeling, okay? Now, one of my first challenges, I had a brother who knows somebody that is in games, don't raise your hand. Porque viene la chota. I'm just kidding. I had a brother, when I was five years old, I had a brother, half brother, he was 16 years old, he was murdered. He was hanging around with the wrong crowd. A lot of us think, oh, if I hang around with them, no, I won't become like them. You are uh, the average of the five people that you hang out with the most. Like Mr. JC, if you hang out with five people that are in, you know, affiliated with games, guess what? Sooner or later, if they don't become like you, you're going to become like them. Whoever has the most influence wins. Who's ever experienced somebody close to you passing away? A lot of you. Who passed away? Sister, how about over here? There was a hand. Yeah, go ahead. 
I'm cool. Who else? Anybody else that wants to share? You don't have to share. It's okay. Yeah, go ahead. You passed away? You probably did. Were, were you one of the ones slouching every year? Anybody else want to share? Anyone who experienced? Who? Go ahead and scream it out. Who? All right. From age 7 to 12, I sold drugs. Now, if you want to become a good salesperson, remember this. To get what you want, help people get what they want. My dad was a really, really good salesperson. He knew that I loved going to McDonald's to get a happy meal. So he'd take me to McDonald's, he's like, Jorjito, vamos a McDonald's, mijo. And we would go to McDonald's, and yeah, I would get my happy meal. I was really, really happy in the, in the morning, before school or on the weekend. And then we would go to these this industrial buildings where there was a lot of workers. And so my dad would give me the drugs, and he taught me how to be sneaky, right? Can I bark? Can you come up here? Okay. I'm gonna show you how we used to do this, right? So if I had something, we'd do it so this. Just shake my hand. Hello, how you doing? And boom, it was done. Give it up for her, make some noise, right? And that's how the transaction was done. So he'd take me to different buildings like that and we would sell drugs and then people would come over to the house and when dad wasn't home, my siblings and I would sell the drugs, okay? Now, you don't know that something is wrong because you're born into it. Many of you, like ourselves, everybody in this room, we experience things in our childhood that were very bad for us, that maybe caused trauma, emotional trauma. But we didn't know that it was wrong because we were conditioned and born into it. Does that make sense? That was me. I would go to school and I would never talk about it. I thought it was just a normal job. My dad was, in, was addicted to drugs, alcohol, gambling, and physical abuse towards my mother. Now you don't have to raise your hand, but in the, in the Latino community, it's very common for you know for your parents to fight or maybe dad to hit mom that was my dad he would come home she'd be sitting in a chair in the backyard and there was like a, a big patio a big patio with these big follows and he would come home drunk and he would grab her head and just boom and bang her head against it just for no reason now my dad did the best he could to raise us based on what he knew based on what now my dad's father, my, my grandpa, was murdered when my dad was only 14 years old. So he grew up with the same challenges, abandonment challenges, challenge, he created all these trust issues growing up because he felt if the person that I loved the most was never there for me, how could I be there for somebody else? How can I let anybody else into my life if I've already been affected emotionally? Who's lost somebody again? Raise your hand. You've lost somebody? So just know that a lot of times when you lose somebody who's really close to you, we create emotional blockages and usually it's hard for us to trust people in relationships, even our family and our closest people. But you have to realize something. I heard someone say, I'd rather have a bruised heart than a caged heart. And what that means is not only do you keep out the bad when you're creating walls, but you keep out the good and the great. Now I was 12 years young, I remember this day as if it was yesterday, like it was a fiesta in Mexico. We had a mariachi, lots of people and family and friends, except it wasn't a fiesta, it was my dad's funeral. We were walking, actually I was, I was in the seventh grade in Santa Ana, I went to car, car intermediate and I got a phone call into my class and it was my mom, she came to pick me up and she said, Nico, tu papá se murió. Just like that, one day to the next, my life got turned upside down. So here we are in his funeral. He used to take me, anybody from Jalisco here? Yeah. My dad's from Jalisco. And there was this Marisco's restaurant that he would always take me when I would visit him. All right, because he told, when he was getting sick towards the, the end of his life, he was in Mexico for a couple months after he got out of jail here for uh, drunk, drunk driving. And I spent three months with him and he'd take me to this Marisco's restaurant to get my favorite Cocktail de Camarón. And then there was a barber shop right next to it that he used to always take me to get a haircut because I always had to look fresh and clean. Here we are, following this car with my dad's dead body in it, passing through the Marisco's restaurant and the barber shop.
When I was in school, after I experienced all these hardships, I thought it was me against the world. I was in victim mode, right? I was blaming everybody else for my problems and my challenges. I was dying. I was that kid that would ditch school. Who's ever ditched school here before? I didn't do my homework. Everyone here does their homework, right? That's what I heard. <laughs> Second home, maybe my first home was the, the detention room. I was there more than I was at home. I was always late to first period. I used to cheat on my tests. I liked seventh grade so much, I did it twice. <laughs> can any of you relate to some of my stories? Raise your hand if you can relate to anything that I just mentioned. Now that was then, I want to share with you a little bit of what my life is like today. So that's my nephew on the left, right? So one of the things that my mentor taught me, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about him later, but he said, if you continue to, to follow these patterns, he said, you're gonna become your dad, you're gonna become your brother. He said, you have the option to continue the pattern, you'll end up like your friends and family, dead, broke, in jail, or in drugs. He said, or you can completely break the pattern and, and create a new standard for the rest of your siblings. And that's what I did. So here I am. It's my nephew. He's graduating high school just a few months ago. At the top right, I'm in downtown LA feeding the homeless. And in the bottom right, spending time with my family. I always said growing up, lots of people, small family, we never learned to spend time together because it was never instilled in us. So as an adult, it's something that I began to create every last Sunday of the month, family gatherings. That's my wife. She, she graduated from Southgate in 06. Hey, stop checking her out. We just, we just got married in Cancun on July 23rd, not even two months ago. Yeah, yeah, give it up for that, make some noise, yes, yes. Now growing up, and I know some of you can relate to this, who, some of the fellas here, who says I'm never gonna get married? I know there's more of you. Now, there is a relationship between some, not, not necessarily for everybody, but for a lot of us, when we don't want to be in a long-term committed relationship, when did you learn that? For me, when my dad passed away, I was so emotionally hurt that I didn't want to get anybody, I, don't, I wouldn't allow anyone to get too close to me. If I was dating in high school or after high school, as soon as it got too close, I was bouncing, right? Why, why did I do that? I didn't want to get hurt. But I said earlier, not only do you keep out the bad, you also keep out the good and the great. So that was a breakthrough for me growing up. I always said, I'm never gonna get married. I'm never gonna have kids. Why? Because I got such an amazing yet bad example growing up that I didn't want anyone else to experience that. I'm 30 years old, I just turned 30 about two weeks ago. We actually celebrated here at the Southgate Park by the volleyball courts and by the time I was 28, I had traveled to over 25 different countries, teaching, performing, Latin dance, which is one of my businesses. Here at the top right, this is us in Thailand. That's a real tiger. He looks kind of small there, but he weighs about 600 pounds. This is us in Honduras. This is us in Costa Rica. This is us when we bought our first home together. This is us in India at the Taj Mahal. It's one of the wonders of the world. This is my mom taking care of me. Give it up for my mom. My mom is a warrior. This is my mom taking care of me and this is me taking care of my mom. Nice. She gets manicures, pedicures, anything she wants. I actually retired my mom when I was 27 years old. I always bring her flowers. Anything my mom wants, she gets it. She's the queen. Give it up for that, make some noise. Now, a couple years ago, my mom didn't have a car to get around. She had to borrow people's cars. So I guess what? 
about our car. Not too long ago, my mom, she, she was born and raised, I'm sorry, she wasn't born, she was born in Mexico in Guerrero, but she's been in this country for over 25 years, and she's very comfortable and used to living in Anaheim. Anybody know Anaheim? So I bought my first house in 2012 in Boy Heights, and she didn't like it, because it was a little, you know, hood. You guys know Boy Heights right down the street? So I had a roof for her, set it up, made it look nice, but she didn't like it. She's like, oh, if I go into downtown LA, there's too many one-way streets. And, you know, by the way, mom doesn't speak English and she doesn't know how to read or write, okay? But she's a word. Give it up one more time for my mom, yes? Now, oops. Not too long ago, she had a room in the house, right? But she didn't like living there, so she would stay a couple days there, a couple days with my sister, a couple days with my brother, a couple days with her friend. So here's me when I bought her this car about two years ago. She looks happy, right? And this is the house that I bought her this year on January 21st. Wow. Yeah. How many of you would like to do that for your mom? All right. So the most important stuff, the juicy stuff is coming up. So make sure you guys, you know, stay focused. This is in, uh, in Riverside, California. Very, very nice area near communities, colleges. And she wanted, I made a vision board in 2014. Do you guys know, I wouldn't know what a vision board is? Yeah. And one of the things I put on there is that I was going to buy, I didn't say maybe, or probably, or kind of, or want to. I put, I am going to buy my mother a house by 2019 in the area that she wants. She wanted, I said, mom, where do you want your house? She said, oh, me, well, I, wanna, I wanna live in Riverside. But you know, my mom like, you know, like many Latina moms, she's like, oh, don't worry, Nico. Like, they don't want to be a burden on us. She's like, oh, don't worry, I'm fine, right? She wanted to live in Riverside because that's where my aunts, uncles, everybody moved to Riverside when houses were really affordable a while ago. So I bought her house in Riverside. I took her to the furniture store. I said, mom, pick your bed, pick your couch, pick your dinner table, right? So obviously, I wanted, her to, I wanted to make sure that she absolutely loved the house, so I took her to the house to see it before we closed on it, but I told her it was gonna be ready in about two months. And a few weeks later, I invited all my, my, my wife and all my siblings, we went to the house, we had all the furniture, actually I called the uh, exterminator, you know, if, if there is any cockroaches, ants, let's just kill it right now, you know, clear it up, make it clean. We got my family, we cleaned the house, we furnished it. Talk about everything that you would need in a house was in the house. I gotta show you guys a video. I'll show it to you guys next time. I have it, I got it off, uh, recorded. So I pick up my mom at my sister's house and I said, mom, I'm gonna take you out to lunch. And I always do like crazy unexpected things. So I'm like, I'm gonna blindfold you. So she's like, okay, that's fine. So I blindfolded her. But first I blindfolded my sister so that my mom thought it was a surprise for the both of them. Sneaky, huh? So I blindfolded my sister. Actually, I hadn't heard of it. I said, Mom, blind, so blindfold Olivia. So she blindfolded her. And then I blindfolded my mom. And we get to the house. And it's raining. But it doesn't matter. And we show up to the house. And she thinks we're about to go eat. I get her out of the car. I walk her. She's like, ay, hijo, donde vamos? Right? I grab the keys. I don't think I have keys. We got too many houses, so. No, so I don't carry my keys anymore, I just carry my keys. <laughs> and I said, Mom, give me your hand. And I grab her hand, I flip it over, and I go here. I say, Welcome to the rest of your life. Pretty cool, huh? Good. All right, let's wrap this up. So, what happened, right? I went from being from here to here. And my mentor, Mr. Carson, he was my substitute teacher. He went out of his way because he knew that I was broken, broken, and I was in a dark place. And he told me that. He shared with me that philosophy. He said, look, you can continue to repeat the patterns like the rest of your siblings. And when you look back one day and people ask you, why did you do that? Why, why are you into drugs? Why are you in and out of jail? I, I would say, how could I not look at what I experienced? He said, or... You can completely break those patterns, set a new standard for your siblings. He said, and you can change the world. And when people ask you, how did you do it? Why did you do it? I said, 
Look at what I experienced, how can I not? Same motive, opposite results. So here, make sure you write this down. As a matter of fact, take a picture. Pull out your phones, take a picture. Don't respond to any text messages, okay? I got about three minutes, so I'm gonna make this quick and concise. Five steps to growth and accomplishing anything you want in your life. To accomplish your what? Anything. So that's where you guys say the word anything. Accomplish what? Anything. I made a decision. That's the first thing I did. And some of you today, you need to make a decision that the rest of your life, will, you will not live it the way you've been living your, the, you know, the last couple of years or your life from then up until now, okay? You gotta make a decision that you want more out of life, that you wanna break the patterns that you've experienced growing up. Number two, you gotta take action. You can't just make a decision and then just wait for somebody to come knock on your door. Hey John, do you want a job? Do you wanna start a business? You gotta go and knock on those doors. Number three, change your friends or change your friends. Are you ready to repeat after me? One, two, three. Change your friends or change your friends. For those of you who don't understand that, very simple. If you can't change your friends to want more, to be more, to do more, to go to the next level, then you gotta get yourself some new friends. You gotta surround yourself with people that want more out of life. Next, you gotta change your habits. The, thing, the things that you do repeatedly become habits. And then those habits will, you know, they will create your destiny in your life. Last one is you gotta find and follow your passion. My passion is very simple. I love and my passionate mission and passion in life is to help people grow. That's it. Finances, relationships, health, whatever it is. Now, you guys can stay connected with me. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. I post most stuff on Instagram. Follow, follow back. Okay. Someone said that last time, but hey guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Now, Ms. Padilla, can we get a, yeah. Now this next gentleman, I met him this year. Now you wanna talk about being on the same path, the three of us. I went to a self-development training not too long ago called Business Mastery from the world's number one most recognized self-development trainer. You got, you, maybe you've heard his name, his name's Tony Robbins. You've heard of his name? It was a training that was in Vegas the third week of August. I show up, I'm sitting down, I look to my left, I look to my right, and there he is, this gentleman that I'm about to announce. He has his own business, he has, just like the rest of us here, speakers accomplish a lot of things in life and experience.